President Biden warned Russian oligarchs his administration planned to seize their ill-gotten gains, and now the world is targeting the billionaire's extravagant yachts. Friday, Italian authorities in the port of Trieste seized the ship known as Sailing Yacht A, worth about $578 million, belonging to Andrei Melichenko. He owns a fertilizer producer and coal company. This followed the impoundings of Lady M, that's owned by Alexei Mordashov, the so-called richest man in Russia, and Lena, belonging to Geniti Timchenko, who controls an oil exporting company. French officials seized the $120 million Amore Vero, claiming it's owned by Igor Sation. That's the head of the Russian state-owned oil company Rosneft. Other oligarchs are trying to prevent this from happening. After it left port in Montenegro on March the 2nd, the Galactica Supernova, owned by Luke Oil CEO Vajit Alekparov, turned off automatic tracking systems, which is against the law for a ship of its size. After Britain sanctioned Roman Abramovich, the billionaire who's selling his stake in the football club Chelsea, his two super yachts began moving reportedly to reach countries without formal extradition agreements. His Eclipse is the world's second largest such boat. It's got its own missile defense system, a mini submarine as well. After recent renovations, its estimated value is $1 billion. And rumors are rampant that the secret owner of Scheherazade, that's a 459-foot, $700 million super yacht currently anchored in a coastal town in Tuscany, might be Vladimir Putin himself. The ship was built in 2020, registered in the Marshall Islands, boasts two helicopter decks, a swimming pool that converts to a dance floor, and gold-plated bathroom fixtures. The ship's British captain told the New York Times that Putin did not own the yacht and that he'd never been on it. The captain said the mystery owner was not on the sanctions list, but that a non-disclosure agreement prevented him from revealing more. Putin owns very little in his own name and often uses homes and ships that are owned by the oligarchs. Joining me now is Alex Finley, a former CIA officer who's in Barcelona, where many of these yachts go to get repaired. She's been maintaining a yacht watch on Twitter and been studying the billionaires to as part of research for a forthcoming novel. Alex, thanks so much for being here. I remember a story a couple of years ago in the New York Times that talked about just how difficult it is to figure out the ownership of real estate in Midtown Manhattan because in part of the oligarchs going to great lengths to hide their identity. This is just like that, right? It's tough to figure out who owns them? You're exactly right. Most of these ships are owned actually by uh, front companies and they have uh, property managers who sort of run them. Most of them are flagged in places like you noted, uh, the Marshall Islands or the Cayman Islands, the Isle of Wright, Isle of Wight, excuse me. Uh, so it's very difficult to sort of untangle who the beneficial owner is. There's shell company upon shell company. And so trying to follow all of that back and figure out exactly who the owner is, is very difficult. And it's done that way on purpose. What are you noting as you're tracking them? Is there any concerted effort that, that uh, comes to light, or are they all just going in separate directions? What are the patterns? Uh, so far, we've seen a number of them uh, that have left Europe. They seem to be heading south. There's questions if they would try to go through the Bosphorus and to the Black Sea, but uh, with, with Turkey, it's not clear if that would be a, a good move for them. So some seem to be moving through the Suez Canal and into the Indian Ocean. We've seen a number of them cluster around the Seychelles and the Maldives. What happens after that, I, I don't know. There are very few places outside of Europe and the United States that can service and maintain these types of yachts. I mean, you were, you were running off some of the statistics about these. These are enormous, very sophisticated machines. They're worth a lot of money. Uh, they're highly technology uh, heavy. They uh, have, like you said, missile defense systems and the rest and high-tech radar. So, you know, even if in the end there, there are some rumors that uh, all these boats are trying to make their way to Vladivostok, for example, uh, where Russia has its specific command, uh, Pacific command, excuse me, um, there are still questions, you know, once they're there, can, can they be maintained? Because that knowledge, that infrastructure is all here in Europe and the United States. Do you think that Putin owns the yacht that I referenced that right now is docked in Tuscany? I don't know. I'm watching that one as closely as everybody else. When the oligarchs board their yachts, 
I've been reading and learning that it seems like they shift from a crew that may be multinational to all of a sudden an all Russian crew. Can you speak to that? Yeah, we have heard some cases where that, that's what happens. A, a, an international crew will, will move the, the yacht from one place to another, but once certain guests come on board, uh, one crew is dismissed and an all-Russian crew will come on. And as you referenced before, anybody working on these boats, they have NDAs. Um, you know, it's, it's all very hush-hush. What flags do they fly under, or is it a variety of them? Uh, you mentioned the Marshall Islands before, the Cayman Islands, uh, some Malta, uh, the Isle of Man, uh, you know, any any sort of offshore uh, tax haven that you can imagine. And finally, where are they safest? So if, if you could sort of switch hats uh, and you were trying to place them in, in, in a, a location where they wouldn't be seized, where would that be? Where do you think they'd most want to get to? Well, like I said, I mean, outside of the sanctions area is anywhere outside of the EU or the UK or the US. And some of them are, are, are not sanctioned by all three of those. Uh, you mentioned Abramovich's yachts. He's only sanctioned at this point by the UK. So even if he's in EU waters, uh, I don't think anybody's going to do anything. Um, once they reach the Indian Ocean, th that's it. Uh, unless these governments uh, can get, you know, coordination and help from other governments who want to help. But we're not seeing any indication of that so far. Um, we've even seen some indications that, you know, some are ready to work with the Russians and and it means more money for them, that the UAE, for example, is is sort of happy to have the Russians come and make UAE their, their new playground. So we're not sure yet how this is all going to play out, uh, but there's uh, a, a number of different players. Great fodder for you and for your next novel. Thanks, Alex. Appreciate it. Thank you.